Yeah, so hi guys. So today I'm going to go through uh, the question that we did in class, which is this. Alright, so this one. So yeah, I'm going to go through the tutorial on how do we construct the circuit and how do we write the program. Alright, so the basic idea is that we want uh, a circuit like this. Um, Alright, so it has a PIC and then it has a switch and then it has a resistor so whenever the button or switch is pushed and uh, the LED should light up All right so this is what we want to do okay so if you have not done yet so go ahead and install the Proteus software that I have uh, provided on, in the Facebook link so it's this IC7 go ahead and open this Proteus software so let it load all right so i'm going to show you how we draw this circuit diagram first all right okay so the first step is we are going to pick the components from libraries so you right click and go to pick on libraries and you type here pic18 f4550 so this is the processor that we're going to use so click on this, uh, click on this and OK. And you click anywhere and this should pop up. You click and it's going to place here. So this is PIC18 F4550 as shown here. OK, so our next uh, step is to pick another component, let's say LED. So there are a number of LEDs that you can choose, but I would recommend you choose uh, this LED. So it says LED BIBY active. So it says animated by color. So it means that the color changes, it can be animated. So all this you can choose. These are different colors. You have blue, yellow, red, green and amber, red, green, red, yellow. So any one of this. So I'm going to pick this. Click OK. Right. So I'm going to click here and place. So you can rotate uh, your components by pressing the plus sign on your num lock on your num keypad. So you press plus, it rotates, and minus it rotates the other way. So I'm going to place it here and we we'll pick another component. This time we pick a resistor. Resistor. So this one. Okay. So we're going to place a resistor here. Alright. So by default it's a 10k resistor. So you can double click this and you can change the value here. So normally we go for a very small resistor for the LED. I like to pick 330. For that okay so our next component would be uh, maybe a push button so pick from libraries uh, button all right so pick this one button active and okay I'm gonna we're gonna place this here okay so there we go and now um, Okay, we're going to start to wire up this. So you click on here and click. So you're going to start to wire this up, connecting. And this should go where? It should go to ground. All right, you can play right click, place, and you have terminal, and you have ground here. So click on ground, and ground will appear. So you're going to wire this to ground. Okay. So the same goes for the button. All right. So since we are going to create a button that is active low, active low button meaning when you press the button, it's going to give you a value of logic zero. So you're going to have a place, uh, terminal, a ground over here. Okay. So when you press it, when you press it, it's going to be giving zero. 
okay so when you look when you press this this is going to be connected and zero will be given to this pin this pin will get a value of zero all right so when you don't press it you should get a value of high value so we're gonna have to place uh, place this terminal and power over here okay and we can can we do this uh, yes in theory in theory um, we can but uh, practically this would short circuit uh, short circuit when you when you press on this button so this ground will be directly connected to the 5 volt so it will be ha you have a short circuit over here so you need some sort of a resistance over there so that's why you're going to place a simple resistor over here okay so just so you won't have a short circuit maybe you want to put a 1k over here okay so there you go our circuit oh yeah there's one more thing right now the controller has no power so you need to make sure you give a power supply to the controller okay so power supply here and this is the pin where you have to supply the power to the microcontroller okay so you have power and you're supplying the power to the microcontroller via this pin here so there you go this is our uh, diagram this is how you draw the diagram of the question okay so now we're gonna write a program a simple program for this okay so we're gonna start with uh, MPLAB Okay, so we're going to start with MPLAB, file, we're going to start with new, and then file, we save as, um, go to desktop, I'm going to make a new folder, switch LED in capital, uh, oh, LED underscore, switch, I'm going to save this here. LD underscore switch dot ASM. So remember this one dot ASM. Okay. Create a project. So make sure the device is this, right? Because we have uh, drawn our circuit using this device. So make sure it's like this device over here. Okay, so create a new project. Uh, desktop LED switch. Okay, so. So we're gonna create this project next and I'm gonna add this next finish. Okay, so there we have it. We have our program. So we're gonna start writing uh, include P18 F4550 and C So F sorry row x00 f22 start or x08 so these are the usual stuff you guys should have memorized this uh, already at this point and start I'm going to try with uh, this and, and I'm going to click on build see if there's any error well no error build succeeded all right so now we're going to start writing up the code okay so yeah so how the code goes so the main idea of this code is is going to keep on checking the status of the switch so at any time the status of the switch becomes zero okay at any time it becomes a zero it will turn on the LED if the switch has a status of 1, meaning it has a logic high, it is going to turn off the LED. So how do we do that? Alright, it's actually turn, uh, quite simple. So, yes, our first step is we're going to need to configure the ports first. So we're going to have to clear F, uh, trace D, A. So clearing trace D will make the entire port D to be configured as output. 
So why the entire pod did we want it to be as output? Because look over here, the LED is connected to RD0. It's port D. Okay, so switch is connected to RB, port B over here. So port B should be the input, port D should be the output. Okay, so right, so same thing, we're gonna set file uh, trace B. Okay, so that is configuring the file. Okay, so just as a safety uh, pre measure, we're going to clear f port D and A and clear f port B A. So this is just to make sure there's no there are no other values in port D and port B at the start. Okay. Okay, now we are going to start to check the condition in port B. We're going to start to check the switch. Okay, so for that, what we're going to do is this. We're going to use a command that is called btfss. So btfss stands for bit test file skip set. So it's going to test a bit in a file. And if the bit is set, it's going to skip the next instruction. Okay, bit test file skip set. So which file are we going to check? So we're going to check port B. Why? Because the switch is connected to port B. Okay, which pin in port B? Pin 0. Okay, so we see here. Uh, okay. So that's a bit clear. So switch is connected to pin 0. So it's RB0. Okay, so we're going to test port B0. Okay, and it's if it's set, if the pin is set, it's going to skip. So the pin is set means what? The pin is set meaning it's not pressed. So like this, it's not pressed. It's it's getting a value of 1. Right? So if it's getting a value of 1, meaning it's a set. So if pin B0, if pin B0 uh, is a set, it's going to turn off the LED, right? So, right. So if it's set, it's going to... Uh, Skip one line and we're gonna turn off the LED. Bit set. Turn off the LED is uh, port D zero. Okay. So BCF is bit clear file. Bit clear file port D zero. So if we clear port D, uh, sorry. Uh, if we clear port D. So if we clear port D, like so, if we clear the value in port D, so this one gets a zero over here, so the LED won't light up. So that's why we do bit clear file port D. So if the switch is not pressed, it's going to skip one line. We're going to do a branch here, branch something, and going to port D. It's going to turn off the LED. So if the port B is not set if it's clear meaning say it's pressed we're going to branch on something else that is called on LED okay so we're gonna branch to on LED so we haven't defined what's on LED at this point so we're gonna define it now on LED so in on LED we're gonna have to turn on the LED so how do we turn on the LED so this is the way we turn on the LED so bit set port D 08 okay and after we turn on the LED we want to branch back to uh, to some point so we are going to branch back into here we're going to branch back to this point all right so I will name this point as check and here we'll branch back to check so what it's going to do is that is going to keep on looping. The program is going to keep looping, 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 looping. It's a program without end. Okay, so I'm going to go through the program again. So start is just configuring pro uh, trees D and trees B. It's just setting the inputs and output configuration. Now check here starts with bit test file. It's going to test port B zero. So if port B zero is set. It's going to skip this branch on LED and go to 
bcf okay so i think i missed one line after it goes to bcf you need to branch back to check okay All right so it's going to skip one line go to port d and go to check and it goes here again okay so if it's still not pressed it's going to go to this line and this line and go back here okay and anytime we press the button is going to check and go here branch on LED because if we press the button port B pin 0 will be clear so it will go to this line and then from there it jumps over here it's going to set and it's going to make the LED on port D light up and it's going to branch back to check okay so I'm going to build this and see if we have any errors oops uh, single not previously defined port. Oh, okay. Port D. Sorry. Build again. Okay. So, it seems like there's no error. So, we need to test this out. Alright. So, before that, we need this. There are a few settings that we need to do. Uh, click on configure. Go to configuration bits. So, the first step is this. I need you to uncheck this. Click on OK and go to the, this FOSC and you're gonna select this guy HS next uh, we should go to this watchdog timer make sure it's it disabled next uh, here go to port B uh, port B AD enable bit make sure this is set as pins are configured as digital IO okay and lastly it's here make sure it's single disabled okay so uh, oops so we can build go ahead and build again go ahead and build okay so right so now next we're going to go to file and we're going to export so click on OK and click on this LED switch. So depending on what uh, file name you 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 give, so so what file name you specify at the start, so this dot hex will appear. So what I want you to do is to override this. Click on click on this. Click on save. Yes. Let's click on replace. Okay. So we have replaced the hex file. Now back to this Proteus back to Proteus so what we're gonna do is gonna import the hex file right so for that edit right click click on edit properties click on this program file okay click on the program file go to desktop so mine is here and click on the hex file and this one you set as 20 megahertz okay so I think we're ready to run let's see what happens if we run the program so to run the program click on this button here this bottom button play all right so it's running the program now so let's see okay seems like the program is running so if you press see blue color represents logic zero if you press pin this uh, pin b0 will get a logic zero and then our program just now shows uh we write it that if it this get the logic zero, then we should light up the LED by giving a logic high over here. Okay, so if the switch is not pressed, this one has a logic high, logic high, so this one shouldn't light up. Okay, so yep, so that's it, guys. So that's how you write the code and simulate it in Proteus. So I hope it helps, and thank you. For